All right, we're back. Thank you all for being here. Let's look to the Word of God for some edification. We're going to look at uh, the area of Paul's circumcision helpers tonight. And we'll start right off in the scripture and with the help of the verse poster, Lori, we're going to look at uh, Romans 16, verse 7. Romans 16, 7. Salute Andronicus and Junia, my kinsmen and my fellow prisoners who are of note among the apostles who also were in Christ before me. Now this verse, uh, it's not a rabbit trail. It's important to notice that uh, it's often misused, this verse. Uh, those who don't believe that the body of Christ began in the middle of Acts, they try to show that that well they they throw it in our faces <laughs> uh saying that the body of Christ was before Paul and uh, but look look at the verse it doesn't say that does it look for the word body in that verse uh, scan back and forth the word body is not in there is it so it's not saying that they were in the body of Christ before Paul it just says they were in Christ. So that's, uh, uh, there are other references to people being in Christ besides, uh, well, the 12. Look in uh, John 17 or uh, John 15, uh, the vine. Uh, so progressing on through, it says, uh, Salute Andronicus and Junia, my kinsmen. Uh, well, Webster defines kinsman. Uh, he says it's a man of the same race or family or relative. Kin is a group of persons of the same stock, race, or family. As a kinsman, Paul was a fellow Jew with Andronicus and Junia. A a fellow prisoner and as a fellow prisoner with Paul they both had been in prison possibly together at some time not necessarily though uh, they were prisoners and they were together in that uh, category <laughs> that uh, aspect going on uh, it says that they were of note among the apostles speaking of Andronicus and Junia they were noteworthy, and no matter which group of apostles Paul means there, uh, they were noteworthy. And he salutes them then, uh, and as he salutes, salutes others in other places in the scriptures. Uh, we'll see in a few minutes that Paul salutes people that are not necessarily in the body of Christ. Paul could have been referring to the body of Christ apostles, meaning Paul, Barnabas, Silas, Timothy. Uh, or he could have been talking about Israel's 12 apostles, Peter, James, John, and, and the others of that group. Here's an example of the cooperation that existed between Israel's Church of God before they fell and well, it was, it was not before they fell. Israel had fallen, but the little flock had been given the kingdom until they expired. Um, but between the church of God and the body of Christ churches. Philippians chapter 4, we'll look at verses 2 and 3 here. Uh, I beseech Euodius and beseech Syntyche that they be of the same mind in the Lord. Verse 3, And I entreat thee also, true yoke fellow, help these women who labored with me in the gospel. Labored with me in the gospel. With Clement also. Uh, that's not Clement of the early church fathers. Uh, and and with other my fellow laborers whose names are in the book of life. 
Well, this reference to at least four people shows that they were kingdom believers instead of the body of Christ believers because their names are in the book of life. From Revelation 21, verses 1 through 27, especially verse 27, we know that all those whose names are in the book of life at the end of, tw of chapter 27, they're all headed for one place, the land on earth in the New Jerusalem. It was in Exodus 19 that God promised the land, the earth, well, the land on earth, that part of the earth, as Israel's future domain. And we're going to look at some verses about uh, the, well, about that and about the um, the book of life. Let's look in uh, Gen uh, Genesis, Revelation 21, start in verses 1 and 2. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. And we saw that uh, talked about pretty vividly <laughs> in the last, uh, the previous lesson. Uh, the, the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Verses 9 and 10. And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, I, sh I will show thee the bride, the lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the new Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. And there shall in, oh, this is verse 27, excuse me, uh, Revelation 21, verse 27. And there shall in no wise enter in, uh, enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. So that's where the, the book of life people go, to the land, this new Jerusalem, or uh, holy Jerusalem the great city, a great and high mountain. That's all on earth. That's all uh, the, the kingdom of God uh, coming out of heaven to earth, the kingdom of heaven it's called. So from the scripture, it's pretty evident that in the early days of the body of Christ, going back before what, <laughs> what we were talking about the book of life, uh, in the early days of the body of Christ, there was much cooperation between the little flock of Israel, the Israel of God, and the body of Christ, those middle acts, Pauline, grace churches that sprung up from people uh, in the synagogues hearing the gospel of God and realizing that they needed Christ and that Christ was Jesus and that uh, he had risen from the dead and they were <laughs> in the wrong place resisting that like the apostate synagogues did. So they met with Paul or Paul's fellow workers outside the synagogue somewhere. And there are various places mentioned. Those body of Christ churches, they're called the churches of the saints, churches of Christ, churches of the Gentiles, churches of Asia, churches of Galatia, churches of Macedonia. All those names are used of the body of Christ churches that Paul established. Paul described these three people as helpers under special conditions. And we're getting back to these circumcision helpers. So look in Colossians 4 verses 10 and 11. Aristarchus, my fellow prisoner saluteth you, and Marcus, sister's son to Barnabas, 
touching whom you received commandment, if he come to you, receive him. Verse 11, and Jesus, which is called justice, who are of the circumcision, who are of the circumcision, there we go, and uh, these only are my fellow workers under the kingdom of God. Not the kingdom of heaven now, the kingdom of God, the overall rulership of God in the universe. These only are my fellow workers unto the kingdom of God, which have been a comfort to me, unto me. There was cooperation between those in the body of Christ and those in that Matthew 16 Jerusalem church, the church of Judea, churches of Judea, the little flock Israel of God. There was cooperation, and you can see that in Scripture in various places where they met in the same building, in the same meeting, and cooperated in other ways. Uh, th don't get me wrong. Uh, Paul did not preach to the Jews uh, in Israel's kingdom gospel. Paul preached the God, his, what he called my gospel, the gospel of Christ at that time. It was believe that Christ died for your sins and that he rose again and was, well, he was buried, rose again and justifying your, your, uh, your person to God, justifying you from your sins. In Romans 1 verse 7, Paul addresses to all that be in Rome and then in Romans, so that's Pretty general, isn't it, to all that be in Rome? Then in verse uh, chapter 4 of Romans, he talks to Jews, people that, that had descended from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And then uh, in other places, he talks to Gentiles, and uh, gen especially Gentiles that call themselves Jews. Uh, other places, they're called Greeks. So those various types of believers were meeting together and written to by Paul and cooperating with each other. So they got the, the, uh, the epistles. They had the word of God as revealed to Paul and acknowledged by the body of Christ prophets, taught to the men, the men taught to the women, and the women taught to the children and younger women. But let's look at the cooperation that went on in, in Colossians 4, verses 10 and 11. Count these men and, and see what Paul says about them. Colossians 4, 10. Aristarchus, my fellow prisoner, saluteth you. Well, that's one person. And Marcus, sister's son to Barnabas, touching whom you received commandments, if he come unto you, receive him. That's... John Mark, uh, called Marcus, who is mentioned in several other places. That's two people now we've counted, Aristarchus and Marcus. And thirdly, he mentions uh, in verse 11, and Jesus, which is called Justice, and we'll refer to him as Justice to avoid confusion. So we see reference here to Aristarchus, John Mark, and Justice, who are of the circumcision, it says in the script. These only are my fellow workers unto the kingdom of God, which have been a comfort unto me. So Paul is going through here, and, and he mentions many fellow wor workers, and he's not saying that they're the only fellow workers. A as he mentioned, he's talking about those fellow workers who were of the circumcision. So there was cooperation between those two different groups, but there was no cooperation between those believing the gospel of God and those in the apostate synagogues who disbelieved the gospel of God. Uh, let's look in 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 2 now. And sent Timotheus, our brother, and minister of God, and our fellow laborer in the gospel of Christ to establish you. There's one of those meetings where people came out of the synagogue and Paul and his fellow workers uh, met with them to build them up, to make sure they were saved, 
make sure they believed the gospel of God, and then they taught them, uh, <coughs> they brought them to the knowledge of the truth. <coughs> Our fellow laborer in the gospel of Christ to establish you and to comfort you concerning your faith. So Paul was comforted too when he heard that they had believed, but it comforted them too to know, just like you, when you find out you're truly saved and can't ever end up in hell, uh, it's comforting <laughs> to know that uh, you can't be lost once you're saved from being lost. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 2, Paul mentions Timotheus, as we just read. He mentions him as a fellow laborer, and that he specifies as a fellow laborer in the gospel of Christ, not just in the work of of, uh, of the gospel or in the work of, uh, you know, menial things, you know, getting the tent set up or whatever. <laughs> uh, Paul describes Timotheus specifically as our laborer in the gospel of Christ. And that's why he sent him, because Paul in Thessalonica, where where they had come from, and he sent him back, where he sent Timothy back to, in Thessalonica, Paul had preached the gospel of God. You can read it there in Acts 17, 1 through 3, the gospel of God. Uh, and then they rose up and they threw him out of the city. And so he didn't get to preach to them the what comes after the foundation there, the, the gospel of Christ, how to be saved. So he sent Timotheus, our fellow laborer in the gospel of Christ, to Thessalonica to lead them to understand, to, to come to the knowledge of the truth of, of the gospel there, the gospel that saves, that Christ died for their sins. They all died for. They don't have to die for them. They're died for. He gives us, he quickens us, gives us life. We're born and dead in trespasses and sins, and, and Christ quickens us when we believe the gospel. So, um, in let's look at Colossians. Uh, well, we looked at Colossians 4.11. Uh, there was a brief time in Acts when God was still calling individual believing Jews into Israel's prophetic remnant. Now it wasn't, uh, uh, God calls by the gospel. And they could have heard the gospel before the fall of Israel when it was still being preached as a viable way to come to God. And that would be before the end of Acts 7. And not been too sure, you know, they were kind of on the line. Later Paul come, gets saved and comes to their town, speaks in their synagogue, and preaches the gospel of God about Jesus being the Son of God, the Messiah, risen from the dead, justifying us. And they believe the those basic facts about who Jesus is instead of being on the line anymore. So those individuals, not the nation anymore, but the individuals could still fall in line in, in the little flock group, uh, the churches of Judea. At that same time, God was, was calling Jews and Greeks into a remnant according to the election of grace, a grace remnant according to that choice. They could choose to believe Paul's they could, we can't. Uh, God gave that choice to those individuals back then in that mixed period shortly after Israel's fall and, and after uh, Paul was saved and started preaching. So, so here are the verses that show that. 1 Corinthians seven seventeen through 20. But as God hath distributed to every man, as the Lord hath called every one, so let him walk, and so I ordain in all churches. Is any man called being circumcised? Let him not become uncircumcised. So Paul wasn't going to preach to the little flock how, how to be saved, uh, how to believe the gospel of Christ. That was out. 
Is any man called being circumcised? Let him not become uncircumcised. Is any called in uncircumcision? Let him not be circumcised. Verse 19. Circumcision is nothing and uncircumcision is nothing but the keeping of the commandments of God. 1 Corinthians 7.20 Let every man abide in the same calling wherein he was called. So it's not switching back and forth. Uh, those people that were were called into the grace remnant had not been called into the circumcision. Uh, okay, uh, so they were waiting for Paul to come along or to hear of Paul's gospel and be saved. And look in uh, Romans 11 verses 5 and 6. Even so then, at this present time, the time that uh, Paul was talking about there with, was writing during, even so, that would be Acts 20 verse 3, even so at this present time also there is a remnant according to the election or choice of grace. And if by grace, then it's no more of works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then it's no more grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. Work you get paid for. Uh, they owe it to you. Uh, but grace, what we're under, is a gift. We don't work for it. We can't work for it. If we work for it, it's not grace, and we're not receiving God's grace then. <coughs> the Lord was calling some Jews to choose the grace gospel instead of the kingdom covenant gospel. So there was cooperation between the two different groups of churches. And remember that later on, Paul says, all they which are in Asia be turned away from me. Paul was becoming unpopular, very unpopular. These were some people that, that did help him. Paul said that these people were of the circumcision. They worked alongside Paul. At that time, Paul had no test such as, do you believe in Jesus? Yes, okay. Well, which way do you believe in him? Are you in my group or in their group? He didn't have that kind of a test. Are you in the body of Christ or in Israel? They came out of the synagogue believing the gospel of God that they rejected, that the synagogue people rejected. And, you know, Paul informs us that there were divisions. Uh, you can find that in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 10 to 16, all about divisions there. And 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 1 through 9. And uh, you can look at those on your own. But uh, there were divisions in Paul's believers' meetings apart from the synagogue. And... Paul informs us that they were emphasizing the division instead of emphasizing their Lord and Savior and his marvelous twofold plan that they could see in their midst every meeting when they would meet every, every week. Whether they still met on the Sabbath or some of them we know met on the first of the week in Acts 20, I think, verse 7. Met on the first of the week and it doesn't actually specify that that was their their uh, body of Christ meeting uh, but it's likely I take it to mean that some of them were even boasting about their particular calling or their position or their genealogy claiming to be either in Paul or in Apollos or in Peter or in Christ and their genealogy mattered as they were, as they had been, I should say, in Israel. Uh, how, you know, that they were descended from Jacob. And how many generations, there, uh, some of them had, had proselyted in and then had kids and they had uh, kids. So there were grandkids, great grandkids. How many generations have you been a Jew? And, and the longer they were in, the, the more status they got. Well, let's uh, 
we'll stop here and we'll get to the rest of it tomorrow.